nobody's scared, welcome. <laughs> so again, my name is Yulia and I run Open Hub and I will put this into the chat. I do want to show you this website so you can see what we do. And welcome to the coding club, first Mondays of the month. And we have different kind of classes. Feel free to explore those and play about it, okay? Now I believe Tyler's time and show. And this is masterclass for app development. Are you ready, Tyler? Yeah, you keep saying masterclass is gonna make it sound too important. <laughs> um, so yeah, what I'm gonna try to do is, uh, well, what I'm definitely gonna do, we're, we're going to accomplish it. Uh, we're gonna do a React Native app from scratch. Uh, I'm, a, I'm a professional app developer. I've been doing it full time for the last five years. Um, I had a weird career. It took a lot of zigs and zags. It didn't start with computer programming. I started with special effects out of college, uh, working in film and theater. Then I spent about seven years as an art fabricator, specializing in uh, electronics and automation. After that, I spent about five years as a professional composer, making music mostly for internet videos and a little bit of film and television. Um, then I had an abrupt transition and started learning uh, iOS development, basically as a hobby, just as something interesting and fun to do. Um, and a friend of mine had a gig coming up that had some extra room on it. I started doing it professionally almost by accident, just because I had some spare time uh, and fell hopelessly in love with computer programming and never looked back. I'm sitting in a music studio right now, so music is still a really important part of my life. Um, I make music when I can, but honestly, I like programming so much, I do it in my free time too. Um, so it's, it's really what I do and what I am up and down and all the other stuff is kind of ancillary. Um, I'm currently developing like a large scale art project that has music involved, but it's also very, it's, it's app powered as well. So I've kind of like found a way to combine all the stuff that I do and all the stuff that's come before. Um, but um, I, I'm an app developer first and foremost at the moment. Um, and hopefully, I mean, you guys have described right now a whole lot of varied backgrounds. And for the most part, um, none of you are app developers or most of you aren't developers at all, at least not professionally. Um, so if there's any one takeaway, it's that that's really not a problem. There's no reason you can't start. Um, I abruptly picked it up not knowing a lot. I certainly had an aptitude for it. Um, I've always been a nerd. Um, I've always done computer programming things. Um, you know, I took C++ classes in college, but I wasn't a computer science major or anything. Um, you know, I programmed Arduinos um, as part of my electronics and automation job, um, but I definitely was not a computer science professional. Um, so you can pick it up, learn what you need to learn, learn on the job um, and become a professional, even if you didn't, uh, you weren't a CS major in college um, or you don't have any what people would consider traditional qualifications. Um, there are some important qualifications to being a developer though, um, even if it's not like school or um, you know what you would consider like uh, traditionally educational. And actually a friend of mine, he sent it to me this morning. He was going on, um, uh, going on a business trip to do interviews and he sent me this thing to read. He's like, I wrote this thing about what it takes to be a good uh, developer. Will you read it for me? Um, and he basically just put up a bulleted list about what it takes to be a good developer and it was perfect. So uh, I'm gonna share that link with you guys. I'll, I, I don't wanna put it now because you'll be reading it while I'm talking, um, but I, I've got that link to share with you. Um, and it, you can basically just look at it. And it's kind of like, a, you know, is this me checklist? Um, and you might know just by looking at it, uh, does, this, does this describe, is, am I this type of person? Um, it, it could be really helpful if you're kind of on the fence. Um, it, it has a lot of good questions to be asking yourself. You know, are you, are you this type of self-motivated person? Uh, do you learn things on your own quickly? You know, that type of thing. Um, so yeah, I don't have a lot 
more to say really about my personal background, I think is more interesting, at least from my perspective, to jump into the coding demonstration um, and show you how the app actually works. And then after that, uh, field questions from you guys, because I'm sure answering your specific questions is going to be more useful than trying to guess what they might be and answer them ahead of time. Um, and a lot of you guys uh, weren't talking about app development specifically, um, but I'm an app developer, so I'm going to have a hard time talking about things outside of that field. And I can't demonstrate things outside of that field either. So without further ado, I'm going to get to it and do a lot of live coding for you. Uh, some of you will probably zone out through most of this uh, if you're not familiar with coding at all. But hopefully, uh, it's going to show you what it looks like to build an app and, of course, specifically what React Native looks like. So if you've never cracked open a code editor or you've never built an app or you've never built a website, at working in React is very similar to React Native. Um, this should help hopefully uh, demystify the process for you. Um, and when this is over, I'll share a GitHub link. You can download this project that we're building. And it also has a readme with the links you'll need to set up your own de development environment and get started. Tyler, do you want to questions asked right away or you want to hold them until we can type it, right? You think um, about questions. Yeah, you know, if, if there's a question or two right away, that'd be okay. Um, mm -hmm. Yeah, sure. Let's we could do a couple questions up top. Okay. Um, but yeah, how how do you call on people? I don't know how this works. Do they just unmute themselves and shout it out? Uh, let yeah, let's have it flexible for the beginning and if it will be too much noise so then I will mute everyone and then we will just accept questions by chat only okay, okay. well if anyone has a question unmute and shout it out and if that gets annoying we'll do it another way all right otherwise just raise your hand and I will be watching it okay hey actually I have a question <laughs> are you speaking here fire yes my thank you see here are you guys able to hear me yeah go ahead man great hey i had a question um so i know that you said this would be kind of aimed towards app building but i wanted to know um could this possibly maybe later in the zoom call or on later zoom calls uh discuss app optimizing or optimizing your app as far as downloads maybe incre increasing revenue do you know if that'll be an option uh well that would certainly be a different topic um, and to be totally honest, one that I don't have a lot of experience in, um, okay. like even, even in my career to this point, um, I'm very much a make it work type contractor. Um, I get hired and am told what the app needs to do. And I build the app and it does that. Um, I don't make my own apps and try to get them out there and make them successful. Um, that's kind okay. of like an entirely different thing. I mean, in general, like, so this is actually a good thing to differentiate. And I get this a lot when people learn that I'm an app developer, they say, oh, cool. I have an idea for an app, you know, and then they tell me their app idea. Um, but there's actually a pretty big difference between an app and a business idea in which an app is a component. Um, because what you're really talking about is how to make a successful business where an app is involved and the, the strategies for that and you know how to get more downloads for your app or how to market your app uh, you know that sort of thing is totally different than how do you build an app that works um, and basically they're they're completely separate universes um, guys okay no i understand and i definitely appreciate you being uh, you know transparent about that um, because I definitely understand that there's, like you said, two different sides to it. Um, so appreciate that. Um, but I'm, you know, still interested in learning more. So I'm definitely going to stay here. Yeah, yeah, no worries. Anybody else? Are we good? Go ahead, Tyler. All right. 
I have a question. Excuse me. Oh yeah, go ahead, man. Excuse me. Hello. Yes. Let's hear from the middle oh. of the night. Uh, <laughs> okay. Uh, I'm asking you as uh, as you are handling this app development. Huh? Does it mean that you are going to start from the crash as in as from the beginning, the guidelines and uh, the requirement tools we need to have for this uh, course? Thing, thing. Yeah, I, um, I set up a readme in the repo that I'll share with you guys uh, that has the prerequisites for setting up your environment. Um, so you'll be able to follow through that and set up your own environment if you try to duplicate the project. Um, I'm not going to start the demonstration with those prerequisites because setting up your environment um, could take a couple hours. It's generally, uh, it's specific to each computer, whether you're on Windows or on a PC um, and depending on what version you're on and you could run into all sorts of weird little problems. Um, so we wouldn't wanna do that in real time. Um, but you should be able to follow the instructions afterward and get your own thing set up. Okay, then uh, which compiler are you using? Okay, I'm operating on Windows. So we, what's the, which is the best compiler I should use? Uh, let me... Uh, let's say, let, ahead, let him show yeah, <laughs> before you ask you. questions. Okay. Yeah, yeah, let me show you what we're doing and then you can ask uh, how to do it. Okay. Sure. Yeah, it'll you'll you'll know what we're up to uh, after I do it. Okay. All right. Let's see. So. Here's the fun part. So React Native in it is how you start a new React Native app when you set up the React Native environment. Um, the React Native CLI gives you access to that React Native init command. So it'll make a new project in your new folder. We're gonna make an app that points to the Rick and Morty GraphQL API, which is an open source GraphQL API for learning about GraphQL and learning about Rick and Morty, if that's something you care about. Uh, let's see, we're gonna CD into the new app. So this is our new app. It is completely functional. So we're gonna run it. Uh, this takes a moment to compile and a warning for when you're setting up your own environment for the first time. Uh, let's see, simulator just popped up. Let's bring it over here. Um, this should just work, but a lot of times it doesn't. Um, there are so many things that can go wrong at this step and setting up your React Native environment for the first time is a common stumbling block and it can be especially frustrating for beginners. Um, there's not a lot of advice I can give you specifically because it's so different on so many different machines depending on what version of node you're using or your operating system. Um, so this can kind of be a make or break moment. Sometimes uh, you might end up having to do some Googling and searching on Stack Overflow and finding out why when you do this one step where it should just work, it doesn't just work. Um, so unfortunately, when it comes to React Native, the very first thing you try to do might not work. Um, but I try to tell everybody as they're getting started because it can be disheartening, know that it's not you and it's not because you don't know what you're doing or because you stink and you'll never make it. Um, it's because this particular step can be particularly frustrating. Um, so you can follow the couple instructions to a T and still have some trouble here. Um, but if everything goes well, you run React Native in it and then Yarn iOS or Yarn Android and it should launch in your simulator and just work. Is, uh, is Yarn what gives you the simulator? Um, no, so that is part of the environment install. So that comes from installing Xcode. 
Um, or similarly, installing Android Studio would give you uh, access to Android simulators. Um, Yarn is just the package manager, and it's being used here simply to run a build script. Um, oh, so here we are. So we are live. You can see over here, this is an app running in the simulator. And now I'm going to open up VS Code. Um, if you have VS Code installed in your path, you can open it up with code period. You can use any text editor you want. Uh, VS Code is really popular, and I recommend it. If you don't have a choice, if you don't have a strong choice of text editor, uh, you should probably just use VS Code. Of course, now it's just a big gray box, and I don't know why. Come on, VS Code. I've only done uh, React to make a web like a web page. So yeah. when you when you make this React app, you'll be able to access it like from your computer or from a phone. No, uh, React Native is not React. Oh, I see. I see. They uh, they kind of have the same uh, you could say grandfather, um, but they're actually totally different. Um, they use really similar logic, um, and they're. They look similar, but the APIs are different. Um, uh, you, uh, uh, you can see here, React Native imports React, so they do share um, they do share some parts of the API. But um, you can't run a React Native app in a browser, for example. Okay. Uh, it has to be on a phone. Uh, okay. it, it does actually run natively. Uh, Android and iOS devices have JavaScript compilers, and they're actually running this code natively on the device. Um, so this is their, uh, the moment that they're super proud of when you first run an app um, that you can just go in here and edit something. And let's see, let's just pick something stupid to change. Uh, change this text where it says title. <laughs> right. Not in curly braces. And it uh, updates live in the simulator. Um, when I first switched from being an iOS developer to a React Native developer, this actually was revelatory um, because it would be about two minutes of compiling before seeing these changes. And seeing the changes in real time was like, Crazy pants. Uh, of course, now I'm used to it, and but it's still really nice. Um, so anyway, the changes I'm making in the code here are updating in real time, and that's pretty sweet. But that's the last we're going to see of the built-in app.js, as we don't need it. So first thing you generally do when you make a new project is give yourself a source folder, and then you build everything inside of there. So we're going to make our own app.js folder. So just like React, uh, everything that renders uses JSX, which is a sort of HTML looking way of rendering things with tags. These tags actually render out to JavaScript functions, um, but they're much easier to write and look at than a big pile of JavaScript functions. Now we just got to go tell our index that we moved our app. Figure out what we did wrong. Oh, right. <laughs> All 
Hello world, what a great moment. What a time to be alive. Uh, okay, so now we've got our new app file cranking. Now we're gonna talk about what this app is actually going to be doing. Uh, here is the Rick and Morty GraphQL API. Right now there's no query here. So we're gonna head over to the docs and explore how the schema actually works. I'd love to go super in depth with how GraphQL works and all that. Um, but I would bore everybody to death even further. So I think I'm gonna go copy pasta on this one. Um, here is a query for getting characters out of this API. You can see the characters query here in the docs returns uh, an info field and a results field. And the results field has an array of characters. What's super cool about GraphQL is that you tell it what you want in the return fields. Uh, and you don't need to ask for fields that you don't care about. So I don't care about info. So I haven't asked for info in the return field. I could, but I don't want to. Um, so I'm just getting the results. And in the results are, is this character subfield. Um, it's returning an array, but you only need to define the shape of one of the results. It knows it's an array, so you don't need to say anything fancy about the array. And I'm only getting a few of the subfields. I don't care about the gender right now or the origin. Um, for location, that has a subfield. So I'm grabbing just the name off the location. Um, you can see that location has a number of subfields as well. Uh, so we'll hide the docs and we'll run the query and see what we get. So we see here that it's only returned the subfields specifically that we've asked for. And just for an example, we we'll remove name. You'll see that name no longer comes in the return. Um, that is what is so super cool about GraphQL. Um, now, this next bit is going to be just a little bit of typing, but I'm going to try to talk as I do it so that it's not just you watching me type. Hopefully it's instructive. So we're gonna make a new file called characters. And this is where we're going to load the character query and put it out onto the screen. So grab a bunch of stuff out of React Native. This is all just the base API. This all just comes built into it. We're barely gonna bring in any outside dependencies. The only things we're gonna bring in are the stuff to use GraphQL itself. So before we wire up uh, GraphQL, just gonna make a little bit of fake data to mess with because we wanna make sure that it's working first. But I want the fake data to have the shape of the real data. So I'm just gonna copy paste out of here. And this is JSON. So I'm just gonna change these names so that it is a real JavaScript object and not JSON. All right, so that is our fake data item. Let's see, you know, I'll do this bit first. Um, so here's what we're going to return. We want a safe area view. This is a special class that when you look at the simulator here, it's got this notch up at the top and it's got this stupid notch down at the bottom. The safe area view knows to put things below the notch and above the notch without any sort of other messing around. On Android, it doesn't actually do anything. Um, it just leaves it alone. Um, so it's safe to use on both. It just ignores it. Uh, so here we're gonna be rendering a flat list inside of a safe area view. And that flat list needs to know what it's rendering. So we're gonna build it a item object to render. 
these are the data fields we're going to destructure out of the data array. And to start, just going to return a simple view. Whenever you're returning a list, every view needs a unique ID or it complains. It has to do with how things get rendered and stored in memory. Uh, when you render a dynamic image, you always have to specify a width and height or else it won't render anything. Um, and it's really frustrating because it actually won't complain. Um, you just get nothing. So that's kind of a gotcha with rendering images. And then we just need to render out the, the other text fields. Not putting any styling on this. Uh, if everybody's not bored to death at the end, I can add the style. All right, still not rendering anything because we haven't actually wired this class up to app yet. Um, and we haven't fed our flat list the data. So let's do that. Flat list needs the data and it needs the render item function. We pop it back over to app. Ooh, it did something. That's a very exciting moment. I know you're all clapping, even though you're on mute. Uh, okay, cool. So, uh, okay. Drink of water here while you all celebrate my coding victory. There were some questions as well. Oh, we got questions so let, already? Yeah, yeah sure. let's let's pause and let's celebrate. Okay, yeah, that's a good spot for a break. I know what your question is. He doesn't look like a Sanchez. I know I agree. First uh, of no, all, anyway. let's celebrate. Let's celebrate. <laughs> yeah, go ahead. What uh, was accomplished? <laughs> what is it? What is it? Go ahead, yeah, anybody, go ahead. I didn't quite understand when you said dynamic image, what did you mean by that? Aren't all images by nature static and have a static dimension? Like, Oh yeah, uh, that's, a, that's interesting. Um, so you can embed an image uh, into your binary. Um, for example, like it could just be in your list of files over here, usually in a folder called like, assets images um, and load it into here. So instead of, uh, instead of source being URI image, this could just be a link to a static resource in your app. And in that case, you would not need to specify a width and a height because your app would know it's intrinsic width and height because it is a part of your binary. Um, so if this image had a width and height of say 400 by 300 and you loaded it up into your app, it would by default be a 400 by 300 image. Uh, you could then specify a different width and height and it would render at the width and height you specified. But in this instance, um, because I'm pulling the image from this URL, uh, it has no idea what the image's width and height is until it actually gets it. So in the meantime, it doesn't know how much space to leave it until it gets it. So it ends up, there's this uh, you know, snake eating its tail problem 
Um, and so instead of figuring out that problem, it just says, you know what, I'm not going to do anything. I'm just going to forget about it. Uh, okay. If you don't specify a width and a height. So essentially what you're doing is you're indicating a dimension as a placeholder that totally gets the actual image. Like when No, you're... no. In fact, in fact, you're, you're specifying the width and a height that, that it's going to be no matter what. Um, okay. Okay. And if you don't specify it, it won't render. Uh, there are packages that deal with this problem um, that you can import. Uh, there's a lot of ways to skin this cat. Um, but if you're using the, the base API image class, this is the way that you've got to do it. Um, and a, a lot of times, if you're building your own API, you would bake the width and height into your image metadata so that you could ask for it before you pull the image in and specify it ahead of time. Um, but you know, basically, it, it's it's something you have to account for. Okay, thank you. Yeah, no problem. Anybody else? I know you guys are champing at the bit to see this graph. It was a question also about what React is, but I think I got answered. Uh, there was also from Jan saying the extension, specific extension, found useful. What's that question? Specific extension from GitHub, but it's shared on the chat. So if you find oh, something oh, I, useful to recommend, to recommend, sure, go ahead and recommend it. Oh, I'm sorry. Uh, I uh, I just basically recommended a, uh, an extension that I sometimes use, which converts uh, JavaScript object to JSON and vice versa very quickly. Like you just like simply highlight it and it will convert it to convert the format. That's all. Like I, I noticed you were doing that earlier, so. Oh, oh, yeah, yeah, but yeah. If I wasn't um, creating this demo object for this purpose, I probably wouldn't be doing that anyway. But yeah, yeah. I mean, I I use it to sometimes help me, like when I get some data from the API, and then I just I want to mock the data, go offline. I can just you know use mm. that. Yeah. yeah. Oh, that's handy to have around. Yeah, I haven't used that before. Um, yeah, mocking data is really important. Okay. Uh, all right, cool. Let's see. Uh, all right, so we're ready to add the um, we're ready to add the GraphQL API. So here is where we're going to bring in our only dependencies for this little project. So we're going to do yarn add. Apollo client and GraphQL. And this gets a little hairy if you try to do it with live update. So I'm just going to quit Metro and run Yarn iOS again. It shouldn't take quite nearly as long to recompile this time. And while I do that, we can get into app.js and add, I'll move you guys off of here. Add the GraphQL dependencies. Come here. All right. Hi, Metro, you're back. I missed you. Oh, still not ready. Okay. So blast that because we're not using it. Rick's back. Okay, so now we need to report all the stuff that we need for Apollo to work. You know what? If you Tell it what you're getting it from first, then it autofills much smarter. Better. And just a couple things to get the link set up. And all this stuff just comes straight out of the Apollo GraphQL docs, which uh, are linked in the readme if you go through it. So we need the link to the GraphQL API, which is the exact same as the link in the playground here.
cache. It's just the default cache, how it saves, what it's downloaded, and then this sets up the client. Need to wrap this guy in a provider and feed it the client. You'll see this pattern a lot in React and React Native where you have to wrap a whole bunch of stuff in these providers so that other components farther down the tree can serve as consumers, which usually take the form of uh, hooks that you use to grab data outside of, or rather inside of them further down in the app. So you don't need to drill down or pass props all the way down. Um, you can just use hooks and I'll show you how that looks once we get inside of it. Um, See, we're almost to the more fun bits. Well, fun for me. Got to be a nerd if you think this is fun. Okay. So use query is what we use to uh, pull that query down. And I'm going to write the query right in here. Usually, if you're using a GraphQL API, you'll have all these queries written up in separate files and import them. But since we're only using one, I'm just going to have it here. Uh, and what's cool about this library and this playground is that the GraphQL is the same everywhere. So this is a GraphQL query that works here in the playground. It's the exact same query that works here with the Apollo API. So this GraphQL tag that's surrounded here by these grave accents um, encompasses this bit of GraphQL, which is identical. I just copied and pasted it. And what works there is going to work here. So if you've got it working in the playground, you know that it's going to work here. It's really cool. Um, it makes figuring out the problems um, so much faster, especially when you're working uh, with an API that you have no control over, um, like a back end that's just kind of handed to you. So this is amazingly all that you need to get data from that query inside of the app is this one hook. So this is what I was talking about, about um, you using the provider here, everything that lives inside of it, which is just this character's uh, screen right now, but could potentially be your entire app. Um, anywhere you use this use query now has access to the Apollo provider. Um, we'll put a line here so that we can see what's actually there. See if there's data or an error. I've also called this data. So I'm going to comment that out. And that data is not correctly formatted for the flat list. So I'm going to comment that out just for the moment. Um, so that should be empty. That makes sense because I just commented out the only thing that's in there. Uh, and we're gonna go over here and look at the debugger, which I haven't shown you yet. Um, this should be pretty familiar to anybody who's done web development. This is the console debugger. Normally you'd be looking at your website over here and you'd be looking at your console output over here. Uh, what's different here is that there's no website. So the stuff over here is just some blah, blah, blah. It's a React Native website. It's not really a website. So this is garbage, doesn't actually mean anything. But the console works the same way. Um, so this is console output from the React Native uh, app running in real time. Um, it's console up here. You can also view source. Um, elements is not useful here like it is in a website because the elements is just the elements of this little garbage page, not the app itself. Um, there are more sophisticated debugging tools that you can run as separate apps, but for the most part, I actually just use this console tool because uh, it's so straightforward. Um, 
So anyway, these are old errors from before, just some typos and stuff. It just kind of keeps continuing on. This here, characters 22, uh, that is this console log we put in here on line 22. So this is our return from the API. It's actually working exactly as we had expected. Um, you can see it's returning this characters object. We'll keep disclosing it. Um, as expected, characters is returning a results object, which has an array of characters. And each character has a data shape that looks exactly like we thought because we defined it. So that's no surprise, but it is thrilling when things work like you expect, which like I said before in React Native is not always the case. Um, something you get used to being a mobile developer is you spend a lot of time sometimes just banging your head against the wall because things aren't working like you thought they should. Um, spend a lot of time Googling, a lot of time on Stack Overflow, just trying to figure out why the heck things aren't working. Um, that's just kind of a part of the life. Uh, so, oh yeah, so what we actually need to glean out of here is that uh, this is called characters then results, and then there's our array. So we need to make sure that uh, down here, our flat list is pulling our data out in the correct format. So the data was coming in, uh, and then we had characters and results. And then that is the array. It's expecting an array shape. So that's all we need to do. Now this could be null and this could be null so we're gonna give it a nice little coalescing operator just to be safe so if it's empty return an empty array and then we've got a dynamically loading list of ricky morty characters um i think that gets us to our next uh clapping and celebrating stage. The only thing I want to show you further is just how to add some total bare bones style to that, which would take like two minutes. But if anybody has any questions before we do that, uh, go ahead and shoot. This was like magic, right? Hopefully not super boring magic. <laughs> the result is exciting. And I'm wondering, <clears throat> what the questions you might have because it's like really touching. And nothing things. totally so broke. Many. I mean, doing a live coding demonstration in React Native, like the chance of mm -hmm. something is not working at all was pretty high. Mm -hmm. I was going to have a whole disclaimer before, but I thought, nah, give it a chance. It might just work. And it did. Yeah, it did. <laughs> you got lucky. Great. Tyler did a lot of iOS development initially. And then why did you switch to React Native? Um, well, really, it was uh, one client. We were building their iOS app, and um, I can stop sharing for a minute. Uh, we were building their iOS app, and they wanted to also build an Android app. And I, I built some Android apps before, but I really didn't want to build their app in native Android. It would have been too much work. And we tried for like three months to find an Android developer and just struck out. Um, so we thought about rebuilding in a React Native. And once we started looking at it, it started to make sense. Um, and I decided to actually take a reduced rate. I said, I'll work at half rate because I don't know what I'm doing. Um, and I'll learn React Native and make it from scratch. I mean, I built the whole iOS app, so I know what it's supposed to do. How bad could it be? Um, and so in six months, I rewrote the entire app from scratch in React Native. And after that, I totally drank the Kool-Aid. Uh, I think React Native is fantastic. Um, do, do you think React Native is going to stick around for a while? Honestly, it doesn't matter. It really doesn't matter um, because mobile moves really fast. And so far, the most marketable skill I've had as a mobile developer is ability to learn new frameworks quickly. Mm. Um, so. If React Native disappears in a week and I'm a Flutter developer by August, like that's fine. Um, <laughs> it, it, it won't it won't be an issue. Um, so like if it sticks around, it'll be great because I know React Native inside and out at this point. Um, and and I kind of I work with the flow of it. But at this point, 
they're all stealing from each other. Like Swift UI basically picked off everything that React Native was doing well and tried to integrate it. I haven't used it very much, but like the the overview that I've done, they, they basically were like, oh, okay, yeah, 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 they're doing it better. So we need to change. Um, so like they're all seeing what the other ones are doing and they're iterating on it and, and moving forward and progressing. Um, so they're all kind of marching towards similar solutions. And, um, you know, if, I, if it moves to something else, like we'll all move too. that's kind of what mobile development is. Mm -hmm. Flutter's cool too, by the way, I spent <laughs> about, I spent about three months, uh, skirting around it. I, I eventually left that project without having to learn it completely. Um, but it's very similar to react native in ideology. It's totally different coding wise. And it uses a programming language that they invented just for that basically. Um, so it's got a little, a little bit to start up, but, um, yeah, it's similar in that it's its own thing, but very powerful. And you can you can start apps quickly. It's got a lot of built-in animations and stuff for free. It's pretty cool. Um, I have another question. Uh, do you yeah. think uh, do you think um, the deployment of having like the deployment is similar between apps and like web pages, or is it very different? Um. Yeah, they're different. Um, I don't do a lot of web development. I, I've done some, like I do know some React, but the context that I've worked in were largely like um, like admin panels to sort of support backends, not necessarily like consumer facing web pages. Hmm. Um, so I can't speak very knowledgeably on like normal production flows. Um, but one of the key differences is that there's, just the interface with the app stores themselves um, really puts a stutter step into deployment workflows. Um, like there is such a thing as mobile, like continuous development and continuous integration, but it takes a very different shape because you can't simply push a change to your code base and then have users using it. Um, you've got to interface with the app store first. You've got to go through code review and you've got to push builds and um, so you can't you can't just like push your build and then there it is right um, and so you kind of have to think about things in a different way like uh, it's sort of like steering a boat like you know you turn the wheel and then the boat's going to turn 30 seconds later um, <laughs> so um yeah, you, it's it's more of a timing thing than anything else. Uh, otherwise, you know, it's just computer software. So the, uh, ideologically, there's no difference. Um, but the fact that you have to manage through these two bottlenecks actually changes quite a bit when you're talking about, uh, like just today, the client was like, hey, is that change I asked for last week in this build you uploaded today? And I'm like, well, it's in the build I uploaded, but it's not going to be in customers' hands until next week because we're always two weeks behind. This is the third time I've explained this in three mm -hmm. weeks. Like, he's the client that put the schedule in place. It was his schedule. Like, he told me how he wanted to do it, and then I have to explain to him why it takes so long. It's <laughs> it, it's that confusing. I see. Yeah, because I really like the front end aspect of React. Um like so far with the web development. And it seems like when you make a React Native app, it's gonna be similar to the front end, right? Where it's like, you're just building this application and it's all cool and I don't have to worry about deploying it and like setting up a web page and all this um, because you're pushing it through this client and this app store, I guess. Oh, oh, you mean like, uh, is it easier because like you don't have to worry about hosting a website and, mm -hmm. and just all of the kind of ancillary stuff. Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, in that regard, it is kind of easier because at least you know what you're doing with it in the end. Like mm -hmm. if you're making an iOS app, well, you know exactly where it's going. Right. Um, and and you have a strict, you have a strict set of requirements that you're trying to build to. Um, and in many ways, it's nice because if it passes app review and it's live in the app store, you know you're good. Um, right. Whereas on the on when you're publishing web pages, there's lots of little gotchas and ADA compliance and you know stuff that you might not know about. Your app can be live for a year, a year before you get sued 
for ADA compliance and all of a sudden it's a big problem. No, it was cool. Very, uh, very informative. Thank you. Yeah, no problem. Do we want to address everything from the scratch? I mean, <clears throat> for the more beginners, right, level, what do they need to learn? What do they need? Where do they need to start? Yes, HTML, CSS, JavaScript. Um, yeah, well, let me uh, let me first make sure you guys have uh, links if you want to uh, pursue or try to replicate this project that we just worked through. Perfect. perfect. Um, because I'm sure that all washed over you like poetry, right? You just you <laughs> saw the rays of sunshine, but you don't remember any of the words. Um, so uh, here is a link to the repository for this project. So it, it should be more or less the same. Um, it's not the exact code that I just typed up, but it's pretty much the same. Um, so if you go to this repository, it's public. I, I put it in the chat, if that wasn't clear. Um, it's not you can, yet. What's that? Not oh, in the chat yet. Who can see your messages? Me to JM. Oh, Ooh, yeah, I, to everyone, please. How do, how do I, why was it not to everyone? I guess you got private message. <laughs> oh, everyone in meeting. Okay, there we go. Sorry. Um, okay, mm -hmm. now it's to everyone. Um, so if you go to that repo, the README uh, shows you the link to the official React Native docs. That should be everything that you need to get up and running. I've reiterated a couple of the prerequisites. Um, Xcode and Android Studio, Node, Yarn. Um, but you should just be able to go through the official React Native docs and get started. If you have trouble on your own environment, you are unfortunately going to be sent to Google and Stack Overflow to try to figure it out. Um, I can say just empirically from the people I've helped so far, it's a little more annoying on Windows. Um, and there's something about the terminals on Windows like, and I, I don't know what this is specifically because I'm a Mac guy, but there's like two types of terminals on Windows and one of them, like you can run Node and, and things work and one yeah. of them, it doesn't work at all. So, yeah, I use Windows, um, you, the Windows comes with PowerShell terminal and you cannot run, um, I think it's Node on there, I think, but usually I just run most things on, uh, on my Git bash is what I recommend. On Git Bash? Yeah, that's what I usually use. Um, is that something you can download? Yeah, it's very easily downloaded. Can you uh, put a link to that in the chat? Yeah, sure. That'd be awesome. Um, oh, yeah, and here's a, a link to my friend's article that he wrote up, What Makes a Great Developer. Um, this is awesome. It, it really, really blew me away because, I mean, we basically like, he was just like, I thought about the few people we've worked with that didn't work out. And like, you can just point to the items in the list where they fell short. It was like super clear. Um, and then I thought about my friends and the people I work with who I just adore uh, and who work great. And they hit every single item on the list. Um, so I think this is a very clear, uh, very clear indication of what it takes to be a great developer. Um, and I'm not sure if, if some of these things are things you can work up to, or if it's like you have it or you don't. Um, that's something I have to think about a little more. Um, but something is wrong with your link. I don't know why. Whose link? It's 404, Tyler. Oh, link maybe article. it's private. Maybe it's private. Uh, yeah, 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 that, that okay. repo is private. Uh, let me... Anyway. We will find the way to share the text. The article. Yeah, no, you know what? I'm just going to add it to the wiki on my um, mm -hmm. on my repo. That'll just take two seconds. Sure. And if you if it's your friend, we can ask the permission and publish it as a blog post on OpenHub as a guest blog post. Does it sound like a good idea? You know this guy in person. You know this guy. Chris Garrett. Oh, okay. I will ask the permission then. Uh, okay, tell me if you can see that one. Yep. Okay, great. 
perfect perfect and i will ask chris about permission to publish it on open hub blog posts okay Please. yeah yeah definitely ask him i'm sure it will be fine but worth asking mm -hmm. yeah it's worth to to share this information uh, and let's he's see, I number have... one, by the way, iOS developer. Yeah, he's number he's one. Best. He's my Yoda. <laughs> um, this is a, a link to a Udemy course. This is actually how I got started in React Native. Um, it should be $12. Every once in a while, you see the fake Udemy $120 price. Do not pay $120 for it. Um, but it's definitely worth $12. Um, yeah, this course is excellent. If, if you're thinking about actually getting started with React Native, I recommend this 100%. Do you use Udemy a lot to learn your new languages? Um, this is the first one that I've done sort of like full stop. Um, I also did the same guy, Stephen Greeter. I did his React course. I did about half of it. Mm -hmm. um, but uh, it's not like I use Udemy as a rule, but I definitely use this type of video tutorial and stuff. Um, I think it's great. You know, I set the speed to 1.75x and just burn through it. Smart. This guy talks kind of slow, um, but he's what's particularly great about Stephen Greeter is that he assumes you know nothing. So he takes everything from a total beginner perspective, but he doesn't say anything in such a way that it feels like you're stupid or that you're like bored while he's talking to you. He's, his balance is just right. No, he's really, really good. I found Udemy, Udemy very useful because there is a very competitive marketplace with all courses. But when you start doing yourself, just, uh, finding the right course yourself, you might be lost. That's why it's worth to have the reference from Tyler. <laughs> yeah. Much. Yeah, it helps to know like this is a good one and it's what you actually want because there is some useless stuff um, or just uh, the the languages change really fast especially the these mobile languages um, and this course is really popular and he updates it like relentlessly so whenever you take it it's generally based on uh, fairly recent versions and frameworks and stuff nice okay i think we accomplished something today <laughs> do you uh, have more questions or a specific way we want to approach um, developing mobile applications so we discussed a little bit is it worse to do native application versus react native right when you need to hit two animals at the same time android and ios that's react native probably is number one choice yeah well that's the very reason that i learned it in the first place um huh? and i would not want to go back to being a native ios developer um the little bit that i've had to do since then it's like painful um i love i love react native I, swift is actually still my favorite programming language like above all of them i'm i'm still deeply in love with swift um oh one thing i'd like to note about uh, React Native, which I didn't mention at all, and, and React as well. Um, I don't do any JavaScript projects without using TypeScript. Um, and I didn't use it in this demo because it just seemed like it would be too much to pile on. Um, and unfortunately, I don't have a good getting started with TypeScript resource because I kind of learned it by just diving in and getting confused and Googling. Um, so that's something I need to dig up, uh, but I would recommend anyone getting involved with React or React Native to get a handle on TypeScript as soon as possible. Um, is, is TypeScript another language or? Yeah, it, yeah, I would call it its own language. I'm not sure officially where it should be classified. Uh, it, it's sort of like a super language. It like, uh, it's on top of JavaScript. It turns JavaScript from weakly typed into being a strongly typed language. Um, so it's basically as simple as it's JavaScript with types, um, which is why it's called TypeScript. Um, and so JavaScript, um, it, it can feel kind of like fast and nice not being typed. Um, but once you start using TypeScript and 
introduce type safety. It catches all kinds of bugs and uh, cleans up your code in a really fantastic way. It makes it a lot more readable, um, a lot more maintainable, and you make yourself a better collaborator to yourself and others in the future um, because you end up making types files and clearly defining your interface layers. And it just makes you do a little bit of extra work up front that pays off hugely in the end in bugs that never happen and maintainability going down the road. Um, it ends up being uh, as simple as like um, any, any component that takes props, you're defining the types of all those props. Um, any function that takes arguments, you're defining the types of those arguments. Uh, so it's, it's stuff like that. And React has actually already had some janky solutions to this. Like there are prop types, um, objects and stuff that you can use or other libraries you could bring in to deal with this. Um, but TypeScript just says like, don't use any of that. Just use regular types, like use it like a real programming language that has types. Um, but it can be a little frustrating to get started with because once you start using type safety, it requires that everything actually comply and that now all your types be correct. Um, and especially as a beginner, that can be a little tough because you now need to actually know what you're doing and know <laughs> you need to know what all the types are. And if you're trying to integrate third party libraries and stuff that, that don't have all their types sorted out, um, you can get yourself into these little pickles um, where you're defining um, custom types so that it works and doesn't complain. And anyway, it's another whole thing, but if you're going to get into it, I recommend you just dive in whole hog and, and try to figure it out. Yeah, it looks super useful. I'm looking at the, uh, the page Julia uh, linked right now. Cool. Andrew, remind me your background. Oh, uh, I'm doing the uh, I'm doing the uh, Thinkful coding bootcamp right now, um, and I'm in Puerto Rico. <laughs> what is yeah. what is your yeah. bootcamp for? What are you trying to boot? It's into? for uh, it's for web development, but um, I didn't really I have no coding background experience at all. Um, so I just signed up for a cool cheap bootcamp that can like hopefully refer me to a job afterwards. Mm. Um, and it's it's a great course. I've been learning a lot. Um, it's similar to the Odin project if anyone's heard of that, except for this is like I guess the paid version or something. But uh, um, but yeah, I think mobile app development is um, a great field to try to get into. I think it's going to be big. And so I mean, it's already giant. So which one am I using? I'm sorry, which one of what am I using? With Gamba, yes. Oh, thankful. Okay. Yeah, I recommend mobile development. We're always looking for developers to help out. Like, there, there aren't quite enough, it seems. So, um, there seems to be more of a demand for mobile developers than web developers. Although, at, at the moment, there seems to be demand for developers across the board. Mm -hmm. uh, so it's a great time to be learning new skills. Um, and the more versatile you can be, the more chance you'll get work. So I wouldn't, I wouldn't necessarily even draw a line in the sand and say, I only do web or only do mobile, like grab as much as you can, right. uh, get, get the first job that you can, that you couldn't tolerate and learn as much as you can. Um, but there's no reason you can't continually kind of change and pivot. Mm -hmm. um, it's it's one of the skills that makes a good developer is being able to constantly adapt. And even if, you know, like I was saying, even if you pick mobile development, you're going to be forced to continually change and evolve anyway, um, just because that's the nature of the, the tools that we use. Um, so yeah, don't don't be afraid of taking on all kinds of different things. That's gonna serve you. Uh, when it's appropriate time to start mobile development, do you need some background, a basic, 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 like bootcamp basic with HTML, CSS, and JavaScript before you switch to mobile? Um, well, you don't need any CSS. Um, I mean, I guess React Native like borrows its style conventions from CSS, mm -hmm. but mm -hmm. I didn't know what CSS was when I started developing for React Native. Um, in many ways, 
I was at a bit of a weird disadvantage learning React Native because I knew nothing about web development. Um, I, like I learned what a div tag was like three months ago, <laughs> um, like no joke. Um, so, and a lot of the React Native literature is like assumes that you're a web developer who's now learning React Native. Mm -hmm. um, so in like tutorials and stuff will be like, so you know CSS and blah, 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 blah. Anyway, here's the hard stuff. Um, but I didn't know any of that stuff. So I had to play a lot of catch up um, specifically just for those tutorials that assumed I knew that vocabulary. Mm -hmm. um, so I wouldn't say that, that those things are a prerequisite. Um, I think you can jump right in and know nothing and start trying to learn React Native and developing mobile apps because it has it has its own vocabulary um, and its own logic. And if you're going to be a mobile developer anyway, you might as well be an expert in that. There's plenty of web developers. Have you made any uh, apps that we might have known of? Um, probably not any apps that you're using, no. Um, <laughs> you know, the nature of contract business, also you, you end up working for a lot of startups that don't end up being anything. Mm -hmm. um, and actually, it's exciting because one of the apps that I'm working on just shipped a couple of weeks ago. And, you know, I was remarking with my partner, it's like, wow, we haven't shipped in like, I don't know, 18, 20 months. Like, you know, the last <laughs> couple of projects we were on, it's like you work on it for six months and then they sell the company and then the app never launches and then you move on. Mm -hmm. um, but uh, uh, yeah, the app, the app that just launched is called Stairs. It's like a savings account app where you can, you know, put in some money and earn some interest. Um, it's as like plain Jane as an app can get, but um, yeah. Cool. That's, that's the thing I'm working on at the moment. And there was a question about jobs and hiring <clears throat> like junior developers and all this stuff. This is a big actually difference. As soon as you see big corporation or organization working on mobile development, uh, then they are not accepting junior developers with no experience or with little experience. This is the difference with like freelance life Tyler is at or in. Yeah, I, I mean, how to get jobs is something I, I don't know a lot about um, because it, the best advice I can give in that regard is to find somebody who's making apps and work for them for cheap because that's what I did. Um, and, and this way works. you can get the mentor and you don't need any experience. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Um, because the most important thing when you're starting out is that you're eager to learn um, and that you have an aptitude for it. Um, so, you know, if you're going the boot camp route or you've done tutorials and you're learning to make your own apps and you can show like, I know a little bit and I'm ready to learn a lot more. Um, and, you know, you're willing to work for a reduced rate to start that's a great way to get started. Um, so yeah, that was exactly the path that I took. Um, most of the people that I work with now, that's what we do. Um, we start, if they have little experience, we start cheap. And if they're great, we raise their rates quickly. Um, so who you would accept then? What do you mean? As your intern, as your like assistant yeah. learning. How did you meet you, the person who mentored you? Uh, yeah, he was a friend of mine, actually, because I was working uh, as a composer at the time. I was doing the music for his video game. Ah, cool. Yeah. And uh, I wanted to make my own video game. And I was like, will you show me how to do it? And he, you know, started putting me on tutorials. And then uh, we were off to the races. So this was good luck. But what about now? How do people find you and start working for you nowadays? Yeah, well... Uh, I'm me. Um, so I'm one person that you know that makes apps. Um, you can, you're welcome to email me. If you're looking some, <laughs> yeah. some help, help or like if you have time for mentoring, but I would say not mentoring from the scratch. No. What's that? Okay. No, you don't have time to mentor from the scratch. Well, no, that's not necessarily true. Um, if you have aptitude and you already know some stuff. Um, what stuff? What's the prerequisite? What's, what are you talking right, about? Right, so the prerequisite would be um, you have done uh, something like we just worked through. Uh, like you could take what I just gave you, the, um, 
like that Git repository, download and set up the React Native environment, get an app running on your computer, uh, tweak it. So I, uh, at the end of that readme, I put some suggestions for next steps. Um, I just wanna see what I actually wrote there. Woohoo. So it was also test, you see? It yeah, was not just masterclass, but it was open invitation for everyone. Um, so yeah, some other things you could do is add more data fields to the query, um, add more style. Uh, we didn't add the style live in the demonstration, but there's some style um, in that demo repository. Um, implement a feature like pull to refresh on the, um, on the flat list, uh, add React navigation to add more screens to the app. And I put a link there to uh, the documentation on React Navigation. Um, so uh, similarly, so a lot of the um, stuff there and the what makes a great developer, um, uh, sort of the recurring theme is like, uh, you're very motivated um, and you could take something like this go through the steps and really attack it like go for it and you you not only would be able to get through something like this but you would have a good time doing it um, if you got stuck you would keep going if you got really stuck you would ask for help um, so this this would be a good thing to try um, not only like to uh, like impress me, like honestly, if you did all this, it wouldn't impress me because it's not that impressive. Um, so don't do not do this to try to impress me, but do this to Learn. know for yourself if this is the type of thing you want to do. Because um, it, it, it'll be helpful and informative. Um, you, you should be able to get through this type of thing. Um, but like I was saying, setting up the environment for the first time is also non-trivial. It's not going to be super easy. So even though it's like step zero, that doesn't mean step zero is easy. In many ways, like step zero is hard and steps one through 10 are pretty easy. Um, yeah, so that's so a kind step. of hacking or problem solving skills has to be demonstrated and dedication. Yeah, oh. and, and, and also like just the fact that it's problem solving, but also self-led problem solving. Oh yeah. Uh, which, you know, a lot of app development is, is lonely. Um, and, you know, there are many times I'm sitting in this chair and I'm like, I've got a really big problem and I'm looking around and I'm like, the, the guy in this chair is the only one that can solve it. Um, so here we go. This is, this is what we're doing. This is the attitude. Okay, saying that, I will stop recording. I assume you don't have any <laughs> questions, critical questions, <laughs> but you feel free to hang out a little bit longer, like up to 10 minutes we have. Okay. Yeah, I've got a few more minutes. Cool.